Now, as Myanmar opens up to the world, we're getting a better idea of what's going on in the once secretive country. For example, 80% of rubies come from Myanmar, and the industry is expected to grow even faster after the United States lifted sanctions last year. Tourism's also taking off there, so there'll be even more buyers. But will the locals benefit? Flora Bradley Watson takes a look. Searching for a gem that could change their lives. Madok Valley in central Myanmar is dubbed the land of the rubies. Last year, a stone found here sold for a record $30 million. I hope to get a big, high-quality gemstone. Then I can have the cash to start my own business. More than 80% of the world's rubies come from Myanmar. But experts say little profit reaches those who mine them. These men earn less than $200 a month working in dangerous conditions. The sector is dominated by the military, who decide who can enter the mines. Some are controlled by private companies who are believed to smuggle their best stones to Bangkok and Hong Kong. Red and blue stones mostly went to the black market in Thailand. Last year, Myanmar shifted towards a democracy, electing its first civilian government in decades, and the United States lifted sanctions against it. Burmese jade and ruby are now allowed to be imported into the US. American dealers have started scouting out Magot's mines. With tourism on the rise, the industry is looking even more lucrative. Gemstone prices will rise. We estimate about a 50% increase, definitely at least a third. Activists are calling for the industry to be better regulated and made more transparent. Some people in Myanmar fear any boom will end up lining the pockets of only those in the military, taking the shine out of the gemstones for these local miners. Flora Bradley Watson, TRT World.